I'm Joanne. You can find us at BlossomHillCrafts.com. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to make the perfect dinner plate. Plates are deceptively easy to make. The perfect plate requires a little more thought and planning. There are issues in design of your plate. You must remember that your plate eventually is going to go in someone's kitchen cupboards. Cupboards are traditionally average 13 and a half inches deep. Plates eventually might end up in someone's dishwasher. Dishwasher racks are approximately an inch wide. So if you make a beautiful plate that has an inch and a half high rim, it's wonderful, but it's being hand washed for the rest of its life. The other thing about plates if you're making a dinner set is you need to make sure that you measure weight of clay. Always start with the same amount of clay. We're starting with four pounds here today for a nine and a half to ten inch dinner plate. When you make the first plate, you are going to measure the width side to side. You are going to measure the width of the foot rim once you have trimmed it. You're going to measure the depth of the plate. If it's a plate with a rim, which we will show you later, you're also going to measure the width of the rim. You're going to write those measurements on a little card so that when you break one of these plates in a year, you can make another one that will be the same size. You're also going to write on that card the kind of clay you use, because you'll forget. In measuring, we're going to use two different tools. We're going to use calipers, and we're going to use the shrink ruler. The shrink ruler is available here in the studio. And what the shrink ruler is, it's a ruler whose measurement is expanded by a certain percentage. There's actually four percentages on here, 6, 10, 12, and 14. Standard wet clay will shrink approximately 12% from out of the bag to the finished product that you're taking home. So we're going to use the 12% scale today. You can use this for other things and you can ask your teachers about that. For instance, if you broke the lid to something that's already finished, you can figure out what the shrinkage was and make a new lid. Just to demonstrate this so you can see more clearly, this is 12 inches on the shrink ruler. And this, I can do this, is 12 inches on a regular ruler. So it's 12.5% bigger, approximately 12% bigger on the shrink ruler. That way you don't have to do math, which is good for me. When I first started this business many years ago, 40 to be exact, um, I only had two wheels and one kiln, and I wasn't going to make a living at that, so I threw custom dinner sets. I threw 30 to 40 custom dinner sets a year. I made a lot of plates. I see a lot of plates in the studio being made. I see a lot of good plates and I see a lot of not so good plates. So today we're going to talk about how to make the good plate. When you center for any form that's going to be low and wide, a plate, a pie plate, a pasta bowl, any form like that, you cannot center the clay wide. You must center the clay high, natural centering, if, if you were going to make a cylinder or a mixing bowl or anything else, and then work it down. So this clay is centered. Now I'm going to start lowering it. I lower it by using my left hand on the side of the clay, my right hand at the top, pulling with the side of my hand back towards what would be four o'clock if this was a clock. Down and using my hand. It's almost like a karate chop on the top of the clay. Really important to keep your left hand welding the clay into the bat. You don't want a mushroom to develop where you've got air under the edge of the clay. To make an approximately nine and a half to 10 inch wide plate, you're gonna make a pad of clay at least eight inches wide. This allows you to create the bowl of the plate and the rim of the plate. Plates, even if they're flat and have very flat rims, have a bowl. 
if you went on to a, um, a website that described um, China, if you were ordering fine China from Germany, the measurements they would give you for plates would include the measurement of what's called the bowl, the inside of the plate, and the rim. So it's important to know what those terms mean. So now we have a pad that's approximately 8 inches on the shrink ruler. Don't change rulers. Always use one. No, measure the same thing. Okay, so it's eight, actually eight and a quarter, this one. Now I'm going to decide, I have to decide how this clay is going to be opened. I know that it's the current fashion amongst potters, some very good ones, not to open clays. They simply throw really flat pads of clay and create a rim. I just don't do that because I was taught differently. Yeah, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with their plates, but that's just not how I do it. I'm now going to open this. This, this, I'm going to measure for you. So this piece of clay now is about an inch deep. I really should have made it about three quarters. I'm going to actually bring it down a little more. Mainly a little high in the middle. So now, to open this clay, and at this point I really start restricting water use, as little as I can possibly use. I'm going to press down with my sponge right in the center, and instead of pulling toward the right side of the clay, I'm going to be pushing towards my hand on the left at 10 o'clock. This is somewhat counterintuitive since we tell people never to work on that side of the clay, but this is one of the instances when it works out very nicely. Press down in the center using your thumb to control the clay that's moving out toward the edge. You can see this little lump of clay. I'm pushing it out, but I don't want it to peel off. I want it to stay down as part of the mass, and your thumb does that job. If you get a little bit of peel off, it's not a problem. But for the most part, if you train your thumb, it'll just... Now you can see I'm beginning to develop a bowl. I'm beginning to develop the inside of the plate and the clay that eventually would become the rim of the plate. Now I will measure again. I like to throw plates a little bit on the... Um, thick side and then trim them. This is too thick for opening some more. This is almost half an inch and I want it about a quarter inch less than that. That would be just too much trimming. So again, same thing. Press down till you have a little edge to work against and then push out. You should be able to weld this right into the clay you've already got out there. But again, if you get a little peel off out here, it's really not going to matter all that much. So that's the bowl of the clay. I'm now going to measure, starting in the very center, where I want a approximately three quarters of an inch, or three eighths maybe. As I go out, you can see it gets a little thicker here. You want to keep working on the center until you have the same measurement here and here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we want to get on to showing how to throw a rim. So let's assume this is all level and even. So now there are three kinds of plate designs, three general areas of design in plates. What's called coupe, which is the first piece I'm going to show, that's C-O-U-P-E. What's called contemporary, which is the 
1950s, 60s sort of Danish, Swedish look. It was called Dance Square back then, for those of you who might remember those years. And traditional, which is my favorite place. So I'm going to start with the coupe. Remember we said that every plate has a bowl and a rim. The significant thing about the coupe plate is that there's no distinction. There's no line between the bowl and the rim. We're going to show you quickly one we made earlier. This is a coupe. This has been trimmed. And there's no significant change between the curve as it comes up from the base to the edge. It's a straight curve with no change in direction. I'll show you how you make that. When you make this coupe, you need to have clay supporting this edge, which you're going to then trim away because otherwise it could sag on you. So, I take my thumb and I press it under, my thumb and I press it under the back edge of the clay and I pull up towards me with my thumb and index finger of my left hand. If you have centered the clay, if you've made the pad correctly, the rim is a piece of cake. You just have to decide what kind of rim you're going to make. That's a coupe. I'm not going to undercut this again because I want that clay down there supporting that curve. The next plate we'll show is contemporary. Contemporary is basically like a coupe. It starts with a curve, but then at some point it just comes straight up and has a little flat edge. That's the dance square look. If I was really going to make this a dance plate, I would cut a little of this off, but I need it to show you the next step, so I'm not cutting it off. But it would be a little shorter than this. But it's straight up with an edge, and the, the bowl has a distinctive change of direction. Now the traditional, which is my favorite plate. It's my favorite plate for two reasons. One is, if you're going to put a design on your plate, if it's going to be something other than navy or ohata or whatever, you can put a design in the center of a plate, but that's where people put the peas and carrots. It's more productive in terms of design to put the design on the rim. So a traditional plate is one that has a coupe, it comes up a little ways, and then at some point it flattens out has a rim. Now that rim can be wide, it can be narrow, but the most important thing about it is that it is not real flat. If it's really flat, it will sag on you during the drying process. So when you're taking measurements to make sure your next plate is just like this one, you're going to use the calipers, you're going to measure the inside of the bowl side to side, you're going to measure the total width of the plate, side to side. You can do that with the, sh with the ruler. Shrink ruler, remember. <laughs> Here you're going to measure the width of the rim and the height of the plate. And you're going to log all those measurements so that you know when you go to make another one, it will be the same size. And you're going to make sure you put down the amount of clay you started with and the kind of clay. And then once you have trimmed it, you're going to measure the width of your foot rim. The most important thing about plates in terms of them being able to stack is that successive foot rims match up. You don't want the foot rim for one plate to be here and the foot rim for the next one to be out there. It's not going to be happy. This measurement of the foot rim has to be the same. 